Are we recording? Yes. Very good. Okay. For this week's Burning on a Journey, I took a four mile walk this morning. It was not intended to be four miles. We didn't really map it out, but my wonderful coworker and I, Megan, we went around at Pettit Rudisill neighborhood in Hoagland Masterson, starting at 7.45 in the morning, ending at 10 a.m. So that was quite a long walk, but it was truly tremendous. I went into two sections of the neighborhoods that I had never really seen before. I went into the northeast part of Hoagland Masterson and I went into the southwest corner of Pettit Rudisill. Now, I uh, want to share with you some key facts about Pettit Rudisville specifically because this is the one where I didn't really know this neighborhood very well and it's an important one for our research project because it's got 5,000 residents. That's a pretty big neighborhood. It's actually 1.5 times the size of the second largest neighborhood that we're dealing with and it's the largest by land mass that we're working with outside of um, outside of West Central. So it's a big neighborhood, it's got a lot of people in it, and what's more significant to me personally is that they have 34% of that 5,000 is people under the age of 18. So a ton of children are in this neighborhood, but it has high poverty rates, and it also, I wanna make sure I get this stat correct because I thought this was kind of shocking, 31% of the people living in that neighborhood, of that 5,000 people, 31% of them have either less than a high school education and 12% of that 31% have less than a ninth grade age education, which is pretty difficult to take. And that's an interesting dynamic of the neighborhood. If you have people who never graduated high school, they're more likely to have job insecurity because in this day and age, we really value education. There are a lot of barriers to work if you don't have at least a general equivalency degree. If you don't have your GED, there are a lot of doors that are just closed for you. So it's an interesting thing to see a neighborhood that is, and that, that was for people over 18, like for people who should have reached that level. So, or society would say they should have reached that level. So these are the stats that I know in my head, and then walking through the neighborhood, seeing these beautiful little houses, so the cool thing that I love, okay, I like tiny things. I love children, I love miniatures, and just everything small is adorable in my mind. And Pettit Rudisil has these beautiful houses. They are, they're smaller than you would see in the normal lots of today. Like they're not suburban lots, they're urban. They're close built to each other, but they have a lot of personality. They have um, similar frame styles, but a lot of differences in color, or if they put their, um, how they put their siding on, how they decided to do shutters or not shutters, if they have a fence. And it was interesting, because in Pettit Rudisil, we saw a bunch, of, a bunch of neighbors really taking care of their neighborhood. It was a very solid, like very few things stood out to me as in terrible condition. There were some lots that were vacant. I was surprised by that. I was surprised by seeing maybe eight or ten lots that were just completely there had there was no more house there and that's an interesting thing I urge all of you as you're out and about in your own neighborhoods imagine what it would be like to just see a driveway with no house it's just a green field so that idea of just something that was there is no longer there and now what do you do in that space which brings me and Megan were talking on our walk, this idea of a green space, an open space, a miniature park, possibly what could we do in that to add value of that vacant land to the community. If you've been reading some of my vlogs, I mentioned how vacancy of land can be perceived as neighborhood disorder. It can be perceived as a blight. It can even make people feel, feel less safe in their neighborhood because that vacant lot can hold vermin, like rats and mice, it can hold glass bottles or syringes, you just don't know. So when you have a lot like that, you want to give it a purpose. You want to give it either that it's a, an open area for children to play, especially in a neighborhood like Pettit Rudisil that has so many children, or maybe just a lovely meeting place for neighbors where there's some chairs and you could come out and have a morning coffee. Like the sky's the limit for these ideas, but how do you encourage a neighborhood to incorporate those ideas? and how? do you encourage that social cohesion? 
So when I'm out on neighborhood walks, these are the big issues that we're tackling. Trying to keep in mind the stats that I know about that's happening in this neighborhood and then the realities I'm seeing on the ground floor. Because when you get out there and you start walking in a neighborhood, you make connections, like I smiled and waved at a lot of people and no one tried to harm me. There wasn't anything sketch, it was just the idea of being out there, getting to know people. A lot of people did look surprised though that I was greeting them. Granted, it was like eight in the morning. I'm not always the most excited at eight in the morning either.